If you see a person fall overboard, you must raise the alarm by shouting "Man overboard!" The duty officer on the bridge will then release the man overboard boy and sound the general alarm. Many GPS units have a man overboard button, which will store the position at which the button was pressed. But try to keep the person in sight so you can find them again if they drift away from the position. Throw them something that will help stop them from drowning. If in port, throw a life buoy with a rope so you can pull them back on board. If at sea, throw them something bright to make them easy to see, such as a life buoy, life jacket, or you could even release a life raft. To rescue a person overboard, even the smallest ships will find it hard to maneuver close enough to rescue a person from the water, and so a rescue boat is required. The boat and their davits vary widely. But almost all will be boarded while stowed. Some have a single full wire with a release hook on the wire, but some have two falls, or the hooks are fitted in the boat. Assistance with launching should be available on the deck. The boat crew may only have to unhook the full wire when the boat is in the water. Dedicated rescue boats can be inflatable or rigid construction, or a mixture of both. Each rescue boat carries equipment to assist with rescues and carry out first aid. Though the actual equipment depends on the type of boat and its construction materials, the rescue boat has a low freeboard, so is more manoeuvrable. This minimizes the danger of the person in the water being hit by the ship's propeller. A boarding ladder will be provided for those who still have strength. For unconscious or weakened people. There may be an extra device to help roll and lift them onto the boat. Some ships are fitted with special equipment to help recover a person directly onto the ship. Most common is a davit launched life raft with no canopy that can be lowered into the water on row row ferries. This can be winched back up with the person inside. In some cases, it might be possible to use a dedicated rescue boat in a similar way. Lifeboats that also act as rescue boats should have some flexible foul weather recovery straps. These fix to the full hooks, and then the lifeboat can be connected to the falls without the lower block injuring the crew. The lifeboat will need to be hung off the davit when nearly home. The recovery straps can be removed once the boat's weight is on the hanging off pennants. The full hooks can then be reattached and the lifeboat housed as normal. On dedicated rescue boats, the full hooks are not normally as heavy, so recovery straps are not usually needed. Free fall lifeboats are very difficult to recover if the ship is rolling, and so ships that use them also have a dedicated rescue boat. On hearing the general alarm signal, you will need to collect warm clothing, your immersion suit, your life jacket. And any other items required as part of your emergency duties before going to your muster station. The duties for preparing to abandon ship are on the muster list, and these will include taking a head count of the persons mustered and preparing the lifeboats and life rafts. Someone will collect the sarts, the epurb, the portable radios, blankets, extra food, and possibly water. Do not abandon ship until ordered to do so. This is usually a spoken command from the master over the public address system, or the message is delivered by word of mouth. When the order is given, you will normally board your assigned survival craft in the way that you have practiced during drills. But when you are abandoning ship in a dangerous atmosphere on a ship with specially equipped lifeboats, move quickly to board the lifeboat. If available, use emergency escape breathing devices. Shut down hatches and ventilators in the lifeboat, and start the engine and the air supply. When the lifeboat is in the water, the water spray system, if fitted, can be used to cool it and absorb gas. Do not jump into the water unless absolutely necessary, and don't jump directly into the survival craft. Board using ropes or fire hoses when normal access is unavailable. If you do have to jump in the water, fasten your life jacket securely, cover your chest with your arms, and pinch your nose, keeping your feet together.
Ensure the area below is clear of obstructions. Look straight ahead and jump feet first. When in the water, make for the nearest survival craft. Do not stay in longer than necessary. If no craft is close, keep clear of the ship and let the life jacket support you. Use the light and whistle to attract attention. Do not swim aimlessly. Try to join up with others. You need to get clear of the ship, away from fire, wreckage and any suction from the sinking ship. Lookouts may be needed to watch for survivors in the water. Use the lifeboats and rescue boats to tow life rafts clear and use painters to keep the survival craft together so you can share resources. Your radio distress message should have sent the ship's position. Stream the sea anchors to help stay nearby so that you can be found. When you have stabilized the situation, you can set up your detection equipment. Tie the EPIRB to the grab rail outside. Switch it on if it's not water activated. Rig the radar reflector and the SART as high as possible. And try calling for help on a VHF radio. Keep equipment neatly stowed so that it cannot be lost in the event of heavy seas and gather up any useful floating debris. Signaling mirrors and whistles can be used almost indefinitely. But do not use all your flares or flatten your radio batteries unless you have a realistic chance of getting attention from a rescuer. Meanwhile, you should check for injured persons and treat them using the first aid kit provided. Drowning is one of the four main causes of death amongst people in distress at sea, so you should prevent flooding by keeping doorways closed. Bail out the inside of the craft to maintain stability and buoyancy. If you are wet when entering the survival craft, you will soon get cold and may suffer from hypothermia. Take off wet clothing and dry it as best you can. Put on blankets, thermal protective aids or immersion suits. In addition, you can sit or lie close together to keep warm. However, do not get overheated, as this will make you sweat and want to drink, and water is valuable. Remove immersion suits and ventilate the craft in hot weather. In an enclosed survival craft, most people will become seasick within minutes. As this will dehydrate you more quickly, take anti-seasickness pills as soon as practicable after boarding and keep a plastic bag close. Using a sick bag will help to keep the craft clean and hygienic. At first, it could be a bad idea to eat, partly because of seasickness and also because eating dehydrates you. You don't know when help will arrive, so food and water should be rationed. When a rescue vessel is in view, make your position obvious by calling on a radio distress frequency, by setting off your pyrotechnics at intervals, or by using the torch, heliograph or whistle. Be careful when leaving the survival craft. You may be weaker than you realize after your experience. Helicopters are often used for rescues, but preparations must be made to minimize dangers. Put down all antennas, and try to clear as large an area as possible for winching. In life rafts, you may have to flatten a canopy. Hopefully, you will never have to abandon ship or fall overboard. But it is essential that you become familiar with the life-saving equipment and procedures on your vessel.